Beginning in late April, almost the entire bay becomes a potential halibut spawning ground. Productive water prevails along the western shore from Candlestick Point to the San Mateo Bridge. While on the east side, the whole area from the Oakland Airport north to the Alameda Rock Wall is considered prime halibut real estate. Offshore, the water gets to about 30 feet deep as it hits the channel and then comes up to less than 10 feet on the often productive San Bruno Shoal, located east of the channel about halfway between San Francisco and Oakland airports. The flats from Candlestick Point to SFO can be a halibut haven in the spring and early summer. At times, shaker to keeper ratios may run five to one or more, but everything runs in cycles and in some years the bay can be stacked with quality fish. Often just ahead of the halibut, schools of stripers move into the area. They bite the same trolled lures and in the same locations as halibut. A trolling speed of between two and two and a half knots will put you in the ballpark for just about any halibut trolling situation. Of course, line diameter, trolling speed, current, and wind will all have an effect on how the lure relates to the bottom and how much line you'll need to spool out before finding terra firma. Over the years, traditional terminal tackle would be three hoochies on an 18-foot leader, very effective for both bass and halibut. Commercial halibut trollers typically use a variation of this rig. But if you have to pick one method from a private boater point of view, there's little doubt a flasher and herring will hold its own against any challenger. Pitting the flasher and bait combo against everything else we ran over the course of a couple of days, the hardware outfished all other rigs combined when worked in more than 12 feet of water. A board to demonstrate this technique, along with a unique hoochie setup, is Terry Lewis, the 2002 Sturgeon World Record holder using six pound test line. By the way, the 67 inch, 81.8 pound fish was caught using whole herring below the Dumbarton Bridge. What I'm using is 15 pound line on this thing and I'm using a, a standard salmon sinker release. And uh, attached to that, is a, I usually use a pound and a half ball. I'd rather have too much than not enough weight. To come down to a 30 pound leader that's hooked up to the, uh, the flasher, and this, this flasher here is just a standard flasher, but this particular one I've had pretty good luck with. Uh, the leader that I'm using down here is 40 pound mason. I, I kind of like the stiffer leader a little bit better. I think it, it just acts better. All right. Oh, he tastes good too. Yuck. I've got a number two owner hook in the bait here, and uh, this is also a number two treble hook in the back, and I think this treble hook is very important. Uh, I'd say probably 90% of the fish are hooked up on that treble hook back there, and as you see, I have a rubber band on there to help hold that on there, because occasionally it's going to fall off. Uh, it just helps keep it where it belongs. Uh, it's, I try to sink it in there pretty good, and then rubber band it down, and uh, you can also use the same rig with an anchovy. The bigger ones, the better, I think. The only difference is on the anchovy, you do need to put a rubber band on the, on the nose. At least that's what I do. And uh, that keeps that mouth closed. I don't want it real tight. You get it too tight, it starts bending the, the bait like that. And I don't think it works well if they roll too much. Unlike salmon, you know, salmon you like that roll, but I, I don't think it, they like it as well. Getting back to releasing the ball, Depending on the spring tension of the release and the size of the fish, the weight may not release. When this happens, either tighten up the drag slightly to bring the fish in, or have someone hand line the fish to the boat. Halibut rarely have much fight on the way up. Either way, get the weight off before netting the fish, otherwise this can happen. <laughs> no, we had a fish. When trolling, just like drifting, you want to keep in mind the general lay of the land on the Berkeley Flats. Look for bait on the meter and subtle depth changes where both fish and bait can stack up. Most productive depths are usually between 12 and 30 feet of water. On an incoming tide, bait will tend to be in shallower water and moving out on the ebb. 
On this day, we worked the area around G-Buoy, a small yellow can that makes a great marker to use as a quick reference if you don't have GPS. When a bite does come, always be aware of where you are. Going back around over the spot again can often result in another hookup. The flasher and bait combo holds up well in the water and even continues to produce when other trolling methods have a difficult time with weeds. Compared to the South Bay, the sand and mud bottom on the flats is much cleaner, but you've still got to check those lines for debris. Have a little lettuce. Like every other form of fishing. Stuff work. I think the biggest thing is put them on the bottom and get them in front of the fish and they'll eat it. 